Well, hello everyone. I am Mike Amerlon. I am a product manager on the Minecraft creator team, and it is my privilege to get to talk to you today about the technical updates in Minecraft Bedrock Edition for creators that are coming with a 1.21.130 update, also known as the Mounts of Mayhem Game Drop. In this video, we're gonna do is review a number of the different settings and capabilities that you can take advantage of as a creator in your own maps, of course, and including you know, being able to build you know, things that are like the spear or other types of experiences that you see inside of Minecraft. So let's go dive in. First up, what we're gonna do is we are going to go talk about pack settings. This is actually one of my kind of, I have a lot of favorite features, but this is one of my favorite features. In a previous article that we'll link to below, we talked a little bit about using pack settings and the kinds of things that you can do with it. When you think about pack settings, there's two ways to use them. One is on the behavior pack side, where you can use some scripting APIs to read the values of the pack settings. The other way is to use it on the resource pack side where you can change the way that things look based on the value of a pack setting. And in 1.21.130, what we're releasing to stable is the ability to use that resource pack side of pack settings. But enough talking about it, let's go just take a very quick look at everything going on with pack settings. So I'm gonna go into Minecraft right here and you can see I've already set up a world. It's a survival world. And when I click edit, you can see various settings about this world. And if I see my resource pack over here in the edit world screen, you'll see that there's a settings dialog. And from here, what you can do is you can see a number of different custom settings that I've set. So there's an entity scale property, so I can change the overall scale of this. But basically you can you know, add your own sliders, you can add your own drop downs, and you can add your own checkboxes and you can make them however you want. And we'll take a look at that behind the scenes in just a second. But in this case, I'm gonna say I want a warm red color theme for this. And let's crank up the entity scale to 2.0 and I can turn off a glow effect. We'll leave that off for now so that you can see the, the red color in all its glory. So now I've basically been able to configure your resource pack and how it works. And so maybe you want to add a, a mode where maybe you don't show spiders or maybe you have a lot of effects or a little bit of effects. There's all kinds of different things that you can do to customize the look and feel uh, of your experiences using pack settings. And now it's right there for creators to, or for players to be able to change to their heart's content. So ignore those errors just a real quick. I need to go update my leashable component, but that's not related to this. And when we end up back in Minecraft, what you'll see here is that I have a Bicessin, which is kind of my test animal. And he's not animating very well. That's probably a separate issue, but you can see that he's got this red color and he's kind of a, a little bit big. So that's one way to do it. And then if I just go back out and I configure it, let's see, let's go back to our resource pack and let's go change this to green. And let's change the scale down to 0.5 like this. And now you can see that when I load it back up again, you can go ahead and you'll see those changes visually applied to the, the Bicessin. And now you can see it's a little, little green guy. So yeah, that's, that's kind of just a very simple but very powerful way to let players customize your experiences. Again, this ability to change the Molang functions is available for resource pack based settings. And we're still working on bringing the behavior pack side of that where you can access all the different settings through script APIs in a future update. Let's just take a very quick look at what this looks like. So let's see, hold on just a second. Let's go bring this up. Okay, so let's first go into the manifest.json for our resource pack. And you can see right here, I've got a number of different settings. I've got a title, a label. I've got a toggle, a slider, and a dropdown where we have a number of our options exposed for you. And what this will basically do is expose some custom settings. And then for the resource pack, the way to take advantage of it is through custom Molang. And you can do this in a render controller. Render controllers and Molang are a little fun to write, but what you can see, let me go over actually into the entity.json file first. You can see that I've got a number of different variables that I'm setting when the mob first loads based on this, you know, is pack setting enabled or this get pack setting Molang query. And then once I've set up these variables to is it blue, is it red, is it green? You can then go ahead and toggle which textures get used based on that red, green, blue. You can 
you know, based on the glow effect, you can change the overall like, you know, emphasis on the RGB colors. I guess the other thing was the scale and you can see here I'm changing the scale based on the value of that entity scale slider that you saw me moving back and forth. The Molang experts amongst you will know all kinds of clever and interesting ways to take advantage of this that are probably much more magnificent than what I just showed you here. But this is just a very quick start on getting started with pack settings. The other thing we've we've worked to do is make sure that you can localize it. So if you want to translate the pack settings experiences into the right languages for your players, you can do that too using the standard localization mechanisms. So that's a little bit about pack settings. And that's kind of one of the really nice features because now everyone can actually really customize their experience and let players have it their way in terms of the overall experience of your add-ons. Okay, so let's go back over to the slides and take a look at some component updates. The precipitation interactions component is now moved from experimental to stable. So if you want to share a, mark, a map with your friends, you don't have to ha ask them to go turn on these experimental settings. It's instable. And what this lets you do is actually configure whether snow will sort of sit on top of your custom block. And we're continuing to look for more ways to ha get more details and integrate them into your block so that if you want to customize the experience further, you can go ahead and do that. But this, this uh, configures whether snow will sit on top of your block and whether rain will sort of pass through your block, essentially. Item components, as you might imagine, we're introducing in Mounts of Mayhem, like, the spear weapon, and there's a number of different facets to that weapon that you can also conceivably add to your own, you know, particular items that you see inside of Minecraft. So there's a swing sounds item component, there's a kinetic weapon uh, item component, and a piercing weapon one with a number of different ways to go configure how those all work. From an API perspective, we've added AABB axis align bounding boxes. So if you think about like a mob in the world, if it's rotated 45 degrees, what you want to get is, if you want to do some very easy collision checking, is an axis aligned bounding box, which is kind of like a, a north facing bounding box. You know, so if it's rotated 45 degrees, then it goes around it, you know, and the like. And so this is something that you can use for doing some, some collision checking and the like. You can get the player's preferred control scheme. You can get the block standing on. You would think that that's kind of easy, but there are some nuances to like, if you're standing on the edge of two blocks, like which block is the entity actually officially standing on, so to speak, maybe from a damage perspective. So that's an actually powerful thing. Liquid settings, the redstone producer component class. And then we have for people who are implementing events, we have the block break event. So if you implement a block component, you can hook that. And we have a number of awesome potion APIs. So we've refactored how potion APIs are available. And now that's a, a component and a set of APIs that you can actually go ahead and use and work with inside of Minecraft. Editor, a huge amount of changes in editor, some really cool stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about it. First up, uh, we've actually improved the structure panel experience to increase the scalability. So if you had 10 structures that you were working with, the UI worked pretty well and the scalability worked pretty well. But if you had 100 structures, the user interface wasn't quite well suited to supporting that number of structures in your world. And now there's been a number of enhancements to make it scale much higher so that even if you've got a lot of structures, it's still a pretty performant and usable experience. Let's talk about some other features. First up is selection block manifest. So this is a nifty feature where when you make a selection, what will happen is you can expand this block manifest and what it will do is it'll show you all the different blocks that are in your selection. So you see I've selected the side of a hill with some dirt and some grass. And in this case, what I can do is I can just use that as a way to select, you know, different types of blocks in a particular experience and then perform some operations based on them. So in this case, I'm going to go select the oak leaves and I'm going to go replace them with maybe some lava. So fun party trick. And that will basically cause all your leaves to be set on fire. So next up, a really nifty one is terrain tool elevation mode. So here, this is just a very nice and simple way to, you know, either increase or decrease terrain. So you can basically make, you know, different types of hills and it's fully configurable in terms of whether you want to go up or down, of course, but you can also can you configure how intense it is, how high the, the hill will fill or degrade underneath your cursor. So it's a nice little tool for, you know, basically making hills and valleys. Uh, really awesome for that. 
jigsaw block editing. So there's a lot of work done in the previous release for jigsaw structures. These are these different structures that can randomly be pieced together to form you know, bigger structures like you know, maybe villages or underground caverns or dungeons or those kinds of things. Well, the key piece of the jigsaw structure concept is the jigsaw block. This is the block where you basically establish connection points for how that structure will connect to other structures when used in sort of a bigger jigsaw structure. So surprise, surprise, being able to edit it is a pretty nice and nifty thing. So in this case, I can select the jigsaw block. I can do editing of all the related jigsaw block properties using things like different types of editors. And then you can also configure, for example, you know, the priority, the target pool. The target pool is kind of the important one because that really specifies how it connects to other things. And then you can also choose like the, what it turns into so that when the structure is placed inside of the world, you, you don't ever want players to see your jigsaw blocks. You want them to see something else. And so you can specify, you know, what it will turn into when it's actually created as a structure inside of the Minecraft world. Okay, and then next up, this is a really huge feature. It's a concept of layouts. We've also referred to this as prefabs. And in fact, in these videos, you'll see it referred to as prefabs. But really what this is, is kind of a reusable template for actually how you lay a set of blocks out inside of a world. So when you go and edit a layout, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you into this editing mode where you can focus on you know, creating your experience. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a simple little house surrounded by three little trees. And let's just pretend that this is a building block of our village. You have this standard template for a house with some trees. Of course, there's a lot of other ideas you could use this for, you know, maybe little castle parapets and those kinds of things that you could potentially like stack inside of the world. But the really cool thing about this is that once you've created this layout, what you can then do is go put them in the world. And you can see I've created three instances here of this house with three trees that I've stacked inside the world. And now when I go back into the editor, let's say I wanted a cherry blossom inside of this particular environment. What I can do is I can go, well, delete that third tree and then go add in a cherry blossom like this. And let me go position it just the right way. And then when you go back into the Minecraft world, what you might remember is that we had three instances of this inside of the Minecraft world. And so when we go back to it, you can see that all three of them have had their their third tree replaced with a cherry blossom. So this becomes a really great way to do bulk edits. You don't have to worry or fret about like, okay, what if I wanna update this later? You know, I wanna wait until the last possible moment to stamp this into the world. Well, now the beauty is that with layouts, with prefabs, you can go ahead and do that. And another, another update tool that you can go ahead and use, in this case, let's say maybe I wanted to go change the frame of this house from cobblestone to maybe a brick to make it look a little bit more regal. So in this case, what you can do is you can actually go update the source. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and change the cobblestone to bricks. And then from there, I'm gonna go, you know, uh, inhale the structure back into my template in so many ways, like so. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just update this from the clipboard. And now you can see that all of the houses, they've got their frame replaced with bricks. So there's a lot of different ways for actually editing the layouts inside of your world but this is a huge amount of flexibility and it makes you know, creating you know, cities or dungeons or castles, you know, whatever you might want to go build for all those repeatable elements, it makes it much more quick and efficient to go build those out. So yeah, some, so some pretty cool stuff. Uh, what's coming up next for blocks? We're working on a block trait, which allows you to imbue your blocks with you know, kind of fence and stair capabilities. So this is the ability that when it's placed into a corner, it has a corner presentation when it's placed upside down. It has an upside down presentation. When it's a fence placed to another fence, those fences join together. You'll be able to take advantage of those effects in your own custom blocks and that custom experience that players have when they wanna place their blocks down. Snow layers inside of blocks, which we talked about a little bit earlier. And then after all this, we're gonna be looking towards things like double blocks, you know, maybe double doors and those kinds of things that you can also add on your own as well. I know there's been a lot of pent up demand for entity hurt events after and before, and we're gonna be having some events that are gonna come out for whether an entity is hurt before or after that you can then intercept. I know a lot of you are doing some very custom things with a world generation, and so sometimes it's interesting to know what the world seed is and what the seed is per biome and so that, or for the biomes, and so that's, that's something that we're looking to bring it together. And then finally, camera splines, 
this ability to do animated motions with the camera will be a really awesome capability as well. And I know a lot of you will be able to do some really great cinematics with that. So that was just a very quick review of everything going on with 1.21.130, technical updates for creators. Check the links below in this description for more links to the documentation for the update article for you know, getting started with pack settings and the like, and we'll catch you in the next update. Thanks for watching.